salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habata fillah a question was asked about having different methodologies and different aqidah that is it permissible for followers of ahl sunnati wal jama'a to adhere to different madhabs meaning madhabs in i'tiqad and creed and different manahij, different methodologies for understanding and approaching the divine text. Is this something permissible? And so when we look at questions like this, and unfortunately because there are many du'at ala abwaab jahannam that are on the doors of the hellfire, calling to the hellfire, saying that it's okay. It's okay to be ashari, it's okay to be takfiri, it's okay to be extreme Sufi. The main thing is just be Muslim. The main thing is to pray and be uh, vigilant in your fasting, in your prayer, go to the masjid, and so on and so forth, that this is sufficient. But really this has never been the case in Islam that that was the sufficient criterion in order to enter paradise. That in fact it's imperative that you have the creed that is espoused and that is derived, the, the creed that's espoused from Ahlul Sunnah Jibu Jama'ah the creed which is ordered and commanded by Allah Azza wa Jal and by His Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَلَيْنْسِ لِلْيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind and jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So that we know that our master, where we begin our, our call from is Tawheed, is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone because that's the divine purpose. However, we find many groups, many sects in contemporary times and in the past who didn't begin with that mastar. They don't begin with that same origin. So how is it that it would be permissible to follow this one and this one, this one who says khuruj 40 days, go to India, go to Pakistan, doesn't mention Hajj, but yet rather it's okay to go there and uh, you know, you find amongst their jama'at those as our Sheikh Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i Allah yarhamahum mentioned, who've been making khuruj for 40, uh, 20 years and still worshiping graves. So how is that possible that they are the same? How do you judge? And why is it that we have du'at, people who are graduates, people who are going to graduate, that are not calling properly to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and claiming and saying the things are okay and supporting the people of bid'ah and ahwa and desires saying it's okay hey he has good this guy has too much good let's not speak about major mukhalafat in aqidah because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in kitab al-kareem wa tasimu bi hablillahi jami'an wa la tafarraqu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says hold on to you all hold fast to the rope of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not divide allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing all of us that we have to hold on to one rope which is the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is Islam that does not include innovation the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man ahtada fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fuhu rad whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected so that means bid'ah that which goes against the book in the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the madhab of the salaf salih that is rejected that is rejected, you can't accept that. Nor is it permissible or beneficial to support preachers to that. Why? How is it that we can support people who say it's okay to have different ittiqad, who are basically sanctioning indirectly uh, the that it's okay to have the ittiqad, the creed of uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. It's okay to have that creed. Oh, it's okay to have Hamza Yusuf's creed. It's okay. It's okay to have this one's creed. This is okay, it's permissible. So we can go to the graves and worship the graves together and hold hands and then go to the masjid. We can now, we can make takfir of the whole, of all the ummah if we want because they didn't make hijrah to our group. It's okay because that's an issue of, uh, it's an issue of aqidah and it's an issue of uh, making tanzil al-hukum ala ma'ayinin or uh, ala itlaq. You know, and so this is, it's all okay because these are different minhaj and methodologies that are all under the umbrella of Islam. This is the afkar. This is the ideology of Akhwana Muslimin. And it's dangerous. Ahabatifillah, wallahi, it's dangerous. Because if we begin to accept the way that some of these preachers are preaching, 
and we say, and, and the doors open, that means as they deviate and you as a die do not speak out against this, then you are helping these people in their deviation and you're helping misguide the youth. The Prophet wasallam said about commanding the good and forbidding the evil and rud ahl al bidah calling and, and refuting ahl al bidah and refuting desires is a part of the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. It's a part of defending the religion and it's a part of commanding the good and forbidding the evil. The Prophet wasallam said, من راء منكم منكرين فليغيره بيد فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك عرف الإيمان رواه مسلم in this hadith is Sahih Muslim the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم showed us and commanded us and said whoever from amongst you sees something sinful then change it with his hand and if he's unable to do so then change it with his tongue speak out against it and then if he's unable to do so then change it with his heart, and that's the weakest form of the iman. So how is it that people who are du'at al-khair, that are calling supposedly, because you should only have one call, you should know for sure if you're studying in Islamic institutions, and you're coming out of maraqis al-sunnah around the world, whether that be in this country or that country, you have to know that the usul of da'wah, you should be guiding people. And you should know what you're supposed to be calling to. And you should have some fiqh and some hikmah to what the people need and how to guide the people. And you should know, as Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi stated, that your call starts. Qal, da'wah to ahlu sunnah, da'wah to min kitabillah, ili kitabillah. Wa min sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam ili sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That the da'wah of ahlu sunnah. It is the da'wah from the book of Allah to the book of Allah. From the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What's the relevance here? What am I talking about? What am I talking about, Habatifillah? I'm talking about the point that it's ikhlas, it's sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're calling to. And it is, and it has to be in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam if you want your deeds accepted. So if you're making da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if you are commanding the good and the forbidden and the evil, it should be done in accordance with the book and the sunnah. It's restricted. It's muqayyid. It's restricted by the book and the sunnah and the madhab of the salaf al-salih. How do we know this? The Prophet wasalam, said about the first three generations, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qal khayran nasqarni thumma ladhini yalunuhum thumma ladhina yalunuhum. The best people is the people of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Letting us know that we are restricted. And I promise you the restriction is for your safety. Think of what kind of Islam you would have if the people of bid'ah and desires had really won out in their creed and itiqad. What if the Jahmiya had thrived and people no longer, uh, 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 they, they rejected the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala itlaq. They negated, they, may, they were ma'atala. What if that, what would you understand of Islam? What would you understand of Islam if Ahla Hadith weren't vigilant in preserving and criticizing the narrators? What kind of religion would you have? Now we have a, a, a time when we have people who study and people who criticize who, subhanAllah, have left, have left all of those things that the people before us brought. The criterion, they have a new criterion. A criterion which requires voke, you know, that you taste the love of Iman and, and, and it's not from books. And it's not from worrying about the scholars, but this is intrinsic. It's an intrinsic feeling that's going to bring your Iman. Then you can look to authenticate it through the text if need be. SubhanAllah, what kind of dalala is there by the dalal? What is there? What's left after misguidance? And this, Habatifillah, as du'at, why do you need to be speaking against it? Don't defend it because the person from your same race. Because we know that some of the brothers are influenced. They can't speak out against people because, even if they're doing bid'ah, because he's from the same continent I'm from. He's from the same uh, tribe that I'm from. He's from the same racial background that I'm from. I don't really feel comfortable about it. No. Ahabatifillah, 
You are du'at al-khair. You're studying the book. You're studying the sunnah. Do you see that the imams of the sunnah took those things into consideration? That wasn't a criterion. That wasn't a criterion for Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Do you think, what kind of Islam do you think will be left? It's not just about feel good American medicine Islam. It's not about feel good British uh, Muslim Islam. No. Because what do you think your children will have if you're compromising the religion to that extent? And you're saying it's okay to have itiqad uh, muta'addida, that it's okay to have many different uh, types of aqidah and we can just sing kumbaya to, to stand against those external uh, threats. What do you think your children, what kind of Islam will they have? People don't, I don't understand why people, especially people who are older du'at and people who have experience, how they can, how they can support these kind of new types of da'wah. The Prophet ﷺ said, also in an authentic hadith, he said, If tarakatil yahud ala itta wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakatil nasala ala ithnatain wa sab'in firqa, wa sa taftariku hathihi umma la thalatha wa sab'in firqa, kullaha fin nara la wahida, kulna min hiya ya Rasulullah, qala min kana ala mithi wa ma kana alayhi wa ashabi al yawm. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, The Jews will break into 71 sects, Christians into 72 sects, my umma into 73 sects. All of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. The Prophet wasallam also said, when we're going to have fitna and we're going to have differences, subhanAllah, this is just one of the many differences, one of the many, many illustrations of differences that we're going to see. It's only beginning. We're going to have plenty of more after this. And are you going to fold and fall to the side when the fitna comes? Are you going to be extreme like some people who just make tibdi of anyone who, who doesn't resemble, doesn't follow, doesn't blind, make taqlid of them? Are you going to be of those who are consider themselves from Ahl Sunnah, but they just believe Aqid is just, it's a door, it's open. You don't even really need to call it to Tawheed anymore because, you know, that's an old dawah. We got social illnesses and social problems we need to face. We've got political ideologies that are threatening Islam. We've got secularism. Now we have all of that and then some. And we have to oppose all of that and then some by adhering to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem wa anzalna ilayka dhikr litubayna lil nasi ma nuzila ilayhim wa qala subhanahu wa ma atakum al-rasul fa khuduhu wa ma nahakum anhu fa antuhu Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al -Kirin. And we have sent to you, meaning the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a dhikr, a dhikr, to we've sent for you a reminder, which is the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to explain it for the people, to make it clear for the people, that which has been revealed to them. The Prophet ﷺ, we can't abandon the sunnah, we can't pick and choose, we can't say now. Some of these things don't seem like they're really uh, supporting feminism. So we don't need to practice these hadith. These hadith cannot be authenticated. I heard one guy in Canada who says this. Uh, others say, you know, we've got a new new uh, uh, contemporary things we're facing. We, we, we need to, you know, kind of lay low on those aspects of the sunnah. You know, we, we need to, the Islamic Brotherhood trumps more, uh, 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 it, it is more important than these other, than the statements of a scholar. Naam, hadha sahih ya yasir, hadha sahih, walakin, walakin, are you throwing away all of those sciences which preserve those hadith, which preserve the Islam that you began to study, and the Islam that you even know about, that, that put you in the position that you got to, min fadlullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going to throw that away now? You're going to throw it away for a new contemporary understanding? You know, all of those other things, this, this concept of Aqidah, it's just something, a, a system and an organized um, uh, theoretical premises by men. These are just systems by men. So the Prophet Ali, uh, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al -Kirim, as we mentioned in the second ayat, and whatever the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes with, فَخْذُوهُ Take it! 
Follow the sunnah. This is advice to myself first before you. And what he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam prohibited you from, avoid it. This is to say that we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is to say that, and from that sunnah is holding on to the itiqad of ahl sunnah. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Ejmal Muslimun, ala anna man nistabana lahu sunnah. أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم لم يحله أن يدعها لقول أحد. The uh, Imam Shafi'i رحمه الله تعالى. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala have mercy upon all the salaf al salih. Ridwan Allahi عليهم. He said it is consensus of the Muslims that whoever the Sunnah has been made clear to them. The Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. It is not permissible for him to leave it for the statement of anyone. So I want us to ponder that, that when we hear these new ideologies and these newfound reflections, these interpersonal reflections that people are experiencing, these new ways and these new concepts and ijtihad and aqidah that we're hearing from some of the du'at, I want you to reflect on that. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come back to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now, listen to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It's a hadith of uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this will show you the importance of sticking with those people who call to the book and the sunnah. Not those people who have a new ideology and a new minhaj year after year. That they say they're growing, they're progressing, they're becoming new uh, faith-based, you know, strong Muslims, and they're sincere about the truth, but yet they're going from minhaj to minhaj, sinewy. Every annually, they're on something different. I've seen so many people, and I promise you, this is just my personal experience. What I have witnessed when I have seen people on things like this. And it doesn't matter their level of knowledge. There's some people who have knowledge, as we see some of these du'at, that Allah favored them to study with major ulama this, this time. And Allah favored them with the, 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 the ability to, to, to digest that knowledge and articulate that knowledge. But that's not enough for guidance. It's just not enough. You can still go to the hellfire with that. And so, my point being, Ahabit Tifillah, We've seen many people that they go from men. I've known people who went from Sufism to uh, 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 hardcore tekfiris to then alham, come to the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. And I've seen people who were adhering to the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah go from the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah because of a lack of knowledge and I don't know what else happened to them going to be wrath of the Shia. I know people like this. I know two individuals just like that that were in my company. One used to study in the Duru's and the Halakat, both of them actually, used to come to the little Halakat that we used to have many years ago. So it shows us, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ikhlas, with the bat, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and firmness on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen to the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'anhu. An Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'anhu qal... The Prophet drew a line. So really, this is the, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he drew one on the right. هذه سبل متفرقة. He said these are various paths. Those are various paths. Okay, paths of both in the center is guidance, and these other paths are misguidance. The Prophet وسلم, said, هذه سبل متفرقة على كل سبيل منها شيطان يدعو له. 
He said, these are the various paths. So he's talking about this path and this path. And he said, at the head of each one of those paths is a shaitan calling to it. Ahabatifillah, it's imperative that we know how to deal with the shayateen from amongst mankind and jinn who called to other than the sunnah of the Prophet who have new methodologies, new minahij, new ways of dealing with things that you never heard before. Because then the youth, they accept that. They don't know. They're looking. They like the guy who looks like them and sounds like them, who's educated. It sounds smooth. It sounds nice. And we love him because of atifa, because of their, their uh, affection. So they don't have the tools. So what about the du'at al-khair? You have the tools. You know that this is batil. Unless you're upon batil. Likewise. وَعِيَادَ بِاللَّهُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ So Ahabat al shows us that the shayateen, they're there. They're calling to various new uh, methodologies. Progressive Islam. Uh, LBGTQ Islam. Uh, all kind of different new ideologies calling the people to Jahannam. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi while alayhi wasallam said in more than one hadith, the Prophet wasallam said also that we would find these differences. He said, "Man yaish min kumbadi kathira." He said, "Those who live after me, those who live after me, that they will see many differences." kathira. Then what did he say? He gave us a prescription, and I promise you, just stick on this prescription. Preserve your religion. There's nothing greater than that. Always go back to those books of the Salaf and ask yourself when you hear new things, just see how it weighs on that. Yes, the Salaf didn't deal with many of these contemporary ideologies and things, but they still left us a minhaj. And it's still based on the book and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa fahama salaf asare. And there's ijtihad, ijtihad mujud. Wa ulama kibar mujud. They're here. We have major scholars to help us. So the Prophet and Isa Salam said, Fasayar Akhtalaf and Kathir, you can see many differences. And then he said, This is a prescription. He said, It's upon you, my Sunnah, and the Sunnah of the rightly guided Khulafa Ar Rashidin al Mahdin. Meaning the rightly guided Khulaf Khalifa. Who are they? Are they Abu Bakr Baghdadi? No. They are uh, men. Abu Bakr al Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu tal'an Uthman radiyallahu tal'an Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu tal'an Hum ajma'een May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all the sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu tal'an Hum ajma'een So Ahabatif Allah, it's imperative that when you hear new things from people, because even some of the awam, they know this is new, new information, this new accepting, new aqidah, this dhok. What is this dhok? What do you mean tasting? Tasting what? Tasting the sweetness of faith without going to the books? Without the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the madhab of the salaf? What kind of thing are you tasting? Sounds sour to me. So Ahabatifillah, it's very important that even the awam, they kind of realize this sometimes. And I say to them, go back to what the major scholars say. And do not fall into this false ideology of that the major scholars in the lands of the Arabs or the lands of Somalia or the lands of various African nations or in Pakistan and India don't know our problems. They can never know our problems. They can never give us a fatwa. La, abidin. Don't, don't believe that. It doesn't mean at the same time to the other extreme that we only go there. That's not what we're saying. But we're saying that you have to have a balanced approach that you're always respecting the ulama. Of Ahl Sunnah. And there's no doubt that a hukum ala shay, far'in ala tasawrihi, that a ruling on something is based upon a correct image of that issue. Meaning, for example, if you start talking about someone in your country, you say, hey, we have a guy in uh, Croydon, and Sheikh, he's doing this, he's doing this, and doing this. The Sheikh may make a hukum on that individual based on his tasawur, based on what you gave him as information, and if he trusts you. And if he's humble enough, then he will at least want to know and make sure that he's not making a fatwa that's going to just wreck dawah, that you could be lying about, or whatever the case may be. The point is, a that a ruling on something, part of a ruling is that you have a correct understanding. So, for example, if the scholars... In a, a certain land, they make a hukum on 
something that's going on in America, for example, and they don't know about those issues. It's upon the sa'in, the one questioning, uh, the one asking for the question uh, to the sheikh to give a, a proper image. So it's very important, Habitatullah, that we, we deal with some of these issues. May Allah ta'ala bless us with ilm al-nafiyah, wa rizqan tayyibah, wa amalam al and practice from the protect us from the dua to jahannam, protect us from being mumayya. Mumayya meaning, a Habitatullah, meaning to throw away the principles of the sunnah. Wallah, I know so many people that I had respect for, but I see that they're throwing it away. And I do understand there's new realities on the ground. I'm living in Saudi Arabia. I'm in a sheltered bubble. I know that. I do know that. But at the same time, when you drift from the books and you drift from the Kitab Allah, it doesn't matter where you are. Kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa da'wah to Ahl sunnah fi kulli makan. It's everywhere. So you can see that some of the people are tested and they fall. They're not consistent. And they begin to throw away the principles. And they begin to adopt and adapt these new ideologies. This is the danger that we have to be aware of. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas with the bat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.